Yeah, football is where we begin on the Sportsman Zone for this Thursday. After weeks of uncertainty and contention, a date has finally been set for the voting Congress to elect a new executive body at the Jamaica Football Federation. Following an emergency meeting on Wednesday, the JFF board decided on January 14, 2024 as the election date. Incumbent President Michael Ricketts is expected to be challenged by current Vice President Raymond Anderson. In recent weeks, Anderson's team has expressed frustration at what they describe as poor communication from the JFF, arguing that the election is constitutionally due in 2023. They have repeatedly pointed out that a 60-day election notice is necessary. The first 15 of those days are to be used for nominations. They have further argued that the Ricketts administration is operating unconstitutionally since his four-year term officially ended in September of this year. Also at Wednesday's emergency meeting, the JFF accepted three of the seven pillars affiliates as being eligible to vote. Those are the Past Players Association, the Beach Volleyball, the Beach Football Association, and the Jamaica Coaches Association. Jeff of General Secretary Dennis Chung has said that the Professional Football Jamaica Limited, PFGL, ISA, that's the Intersecondary School Sports Association, Intercol and the Referees Association have until the 20th of December to be duly registered with the GFF. Chung has also said that the January 14 election date was to ensure no party was left disenfranchised. As we continue to track the happenings around this highly contentious GFF election, we are joined by President of the Harborview Football Club, Chairman of the Harborview Football Club, Carville Stewart. And of course, uh, Carville Stewart has served in many other areas of uh, football in the land of wood and water. And in recent years, he was also vice chairman of the Premier League Clubs Association, a body which is no longer in operation, of course. Carville Stewart, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sportsman Zone. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm fine. Thank you for having me and good afternoon to you and the viewers. Yeah, for sure. Let, let's, let's, let's get the ball rolling, whistle and all. January 14, the date put forward for the voting Congress to elect the next president of the Jamaica Football Federation and by extension the executive body. Um, your thoughts on the date selected, especially against the background that the Raymond Anderson team has been contending that the election is due constitutionally in 2023? Yeah, well, the, the view now on our, our part is that the extensive strategizing and planning and maneuvering to create unfair advantages to them has led to this date of the 14th of January. The question now is whether or not, certainly the Constitution doesn't allow for that, However, they will make decisions that may be refutable later on. The main person that they should be cautious of here, though, is FIFA. Whether or not FIFA was invested in an election happening in 2023 and therefore may take other action if they view this to be incorrect. Mm. Looking at what has been said so far by Dennis Chung, the um, General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation. He's essentially hinted that there is no undue delay and so there should be no concern from a FIFA standpoint. I am not, I'm not sure of that. There has been undue delay. The persons in place now their tenure would have ended at around about the 14th of September this year, and therefore efforts should have been made to have an election in time to have a fully operational executive starting the 15th of September 2023. They did not do that. They also ensured that in terms of the 60-day requirement of the Constitution, that 60 days would have expired sometime in January because they had not planned to name an election date before now. 
And they'll, they'll roll out a myriad of excuses, as they always do. And you would, you would have noted over the years with all the incompetent practices and, and outcomes that have happened, they have had excuses. And this is just another one. Yeah, Dennis Chung has said that, listen, they came to this decision because if they had the election in 2023, the Pillar 3 affiliates would not be able to vote. None of the Pillar 3 affiliates would have been able to vote had they gone ahead and had the election in 2023. Your own thoughts on that, but I also want to get your thoughts on only three of the seven Pillar 3 affiliates um, mm -hmm. given clearance as of now, to be part of the voting process, and the others, which we named at the top of this segment, having until the 20th of December to get themselves duly registered with the JFF. Ricardo, all of that is just machinations on their part. Their ability to include the, that group in Pillar 3, and let me say here now, Pillar 3, was required by FIFA to ensure the broader and wider participation of football stakeholders in the JFF. And hence, this is why you have these groups being recognized and recognized in the constitution that was, was agreed on in December of 2022. However, it is only in recent weeks or days that they have notified some of these groups asking that they submit information that the, the people would have been totally unaware of because the constitution was never shared with any of them formally, nor did the JFF set out a package of requirements for them to answer to. And so groups found themselves submitting information and then being told later on that the, the amount of information is insufficient. And as we sit here today, there is still not a listing of the full requirements issued to the Pillar 3 people. But really, for emphasis, Pillar 3 is to expand the participation of football stakeholders in the, within the JFF. And I say that because it leads to the selections that they have made also. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you went there because uh, <laughs> relating to Pillar 3 and we look at the bodies that have been approved as of now to be part mm -hmm. of the voting Congress, the Past Players Association, there is the Beach Football Association, which as far as we understand was set up by Bruce Gaynor, a current vice president and who... Mm -hmm. um, uh, is expected to be on the slate of Michael Ricketts, and there is also Patrick Malcolm, a board member, and then the Jamaica Coaches Association, which was set up by Rodel Speed, who again is expected to be part of the um, Michael Ricketts um, slate for the January 14 election process. Your own thoughts on that specifically? Okay. Of the three, the only real and legitimate group is the Past Peers Association. Been in operation for years and have represented the interests of a number of individuals in addition to the group at large. The other two are fabrications. They, and also fabrications that go against the FIFA tenet that Pillar 3 was to broaden the participation of football stakeholders. They, both organizations were, were corporately registered in the month of October, one earlier than the other. The, the beach football is headed by Bruce Gaynor, as you pointed out, Malcolm, and another who is an employee of the JFF. Now, if that is not conflict of interest, you tell me what is. One, two, none of them. Not one of them has ever participated in beach football, whether at the player level, the administrative level, at no time were they ever involved. They set up a group and registered it somewhere around the 17th of October and, and have now chosen that group. Now, what is the corollary to that group? The other group is the Beach Soccer Association. That is what they 
beach football is called formally. And those people have the right name because they have been involved over 15 years. Some were involved in the inaugural establishment of beach football under the sponsorship of Red Stripe. And I know Pat Girl was one of those. Andrew Price has been the national coach of every beach ball team that we have put out to represent Jamaica. And there are others there who, who operated the management of, foot, of beach football. Beach football, beach soccer can show you current correspondence where they maintain relationships with beach soccer around the world. And had they been made aware of the requirements of the JFF, they would have established their due diligence and, and pursued their due diligence long ago. When they were eventually made aware, which is after they applied for membership, they were then told about all these things that are required. And the claim is that they did not submit any information or sufficient information and so were ruled out in favor of an organization that has never been involved in beach football. In the case of the coaches. Yeah. But before you go another, in, before you go mm -hmm. to the to the coaches, um, yeah. Carvel, given what you have just said, um, yes. in terms of how the beach football association was set up when there was a beach soccer association already in place, um, right. can this be challenged? Um, by the Raymond Anderson-led party or any other um, that it, decides that they want to put themselves up for challenged. election? It is being challenged, and you may, you may see a letter in circulation or may not have seen it from Beach Soccer Association. And they have included the, in their subjects to which the letter is addressed. They have included FIFA, CONCACAF, and CFU. So they are not they are not sitting down, and and uh, accepting this fabrication that has taken place. Again, I have always it is not just incompetence; it's corruption. They are corrupting the electoral process, and it needs to stop. So you want me to go to the coaches now? Yes. The major conflict here is that Rudolph Speed is a board member technical um, committee chairman and every one of the coaches that he has listed as members are employed to the JFF. If not everyone, 95% of them are. Now, who, if I am an employee, who am I going to vote for? This should not be allowed to stand. Conversely, Vin Blaine incorporated and has had the real and true coaches association for many years now he has in fact educated most if not all of the coaches that are now working for the jff he has maintained webinars throughout wherever he is working on the ground he has maintained coaching seminars for coaches here in Jamaica. Certainly, Kasafa has one maybe every month or maybe less frequent. But we do get, if it's not Vin, it's some other colleague of his that he has encouraged and engaged to present webinars, coaching webinars. And I think one is due soon. So this, again, must be objected to. And we're, we're looking forward to hearing more details from, from Vin on this. And Vin is another of the group that was not given any information about the requirements of the JFF. And any response you get to me is going to constitute falsehoods in respect to the information that they were seeking from these, these people. Now remember, these groups, were included in the constitution. Yeah. Carvel, the, the, the other groups, um, the ISA Intercal Referees Association, um, PFJL, um, I'm trying yes. to understand why those groups at this stage would not be considered 
um, as part of the they're Jamaica using, Football Federation? They're using the same absence of information in order to say they are justifying their non-inclusion. But can you imagine ISA being nominated in the Constitution, not being allowed to participate at the JFF under any circumstance? Intercal is also another one, right? And the same thing, Intercal never, never even got a request from them for information. Never got a request for information. Uh, you mentioned, um, well, help me here. Referees Association Refer and oh, Referees PFJL. Association. Referees Association. Peter Prendigas has submitted his company, which has, was just established some years ago, and was the major referees group nationally. In order to object to that, we know that they were trying to organize a group of referees who all are involved with, and are working in the current national competitions and are related directly to the gym. And so these kinds of improper, corrupt practices must be called out for what they are and must stop, right? There was one other association, it was a... Yeah, the other association, PFJL, Professional PFO. Football Jamaica Limited, can you imagine PFJL, uh, a construct of the JFF, cannot be included now for whatever reason? I was around when the, when the company was registered, and I'm aware of who the original shareholders are, and, and I knew of the JFF effort to, to bring this new organization into operation. I don't know why. I know that they were not required to submit information until maybe a couple of days ago. Mm. And when we spoke to them last night, they, they said it's true they had not yet submitted anything because they just got the, the requirements for submission. Yeah, well, the JFF has said they have until the 20th of December to make those submissions, yeah. which is now the cutoff um, to become eligible yeah. to vote on the 14th of January, Lance. Yeah, and yes, uh, Carvel, and I, Carvel, before mm -hmm. we go, I just want to... Oh, great, Lance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Yeah, man. All right. I just wanted to confirm the, the, what you mentioned just now about the beat soccer um, letter that um, yes. a very comprehensive and detailed letter yes, complaining okay. of being disenfranchised and uh, right. they have copied CFU, CONCACAF and FIFA and so, FIFA. so yeah. we expect to hear more about that but can you yeah. tell me about the FIFA consultant that is with the JFF at the moment in yeah. office initially yeah. um, contracted to, to oversee the financial difficulties the yeah. JFF is experiencing but doesn't yeah. he have any governance um, issues on his portfolio as well? Because how could the JFF um, be doing all of this, which you are saying is breaching the Constitution, and a FIFA representative is, is in the office as, as a representative of FIFA to ensure that things are done properly? I'm, I'm a little lost as, there. As best I understand it, Lance, he's only responsible for financial mm -hmm financial matters yes. and, and seeing to it that hopefully we are brought back into line. It seems unlikely with the current group. They don't seem to know because they've been at it now for five, almost six years of restricted financing and they can't get it right. Mm -hmm. It has meant the loss of over three million US dollars to Jamaica's football. Mm -hmm. people, do, people have never been faced with the fact of the amount of money that these people have lost Jamaica's football. It's $3 million over five years, and if six years are completed, it would be $3.6 million. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little concerned before you go, Carvel, that you have so explicitly outlined what you consider huge breaches here from the JFF, and yes. uh, this process seems to be going ahead full yes. steam, and the JFF is behaving as if 
you know, mm. they, are, they, are, they are on a good course. And I'm, I'm not hearing Lines. the kind of backlash that probably needs Lines. to happen if it is that your position is correct. Yeah. Lance, I made it my point of duty to, and one of our members in the group that is, is supporting Raymond's campaign, put a document in that outlined in great detail the recent normalizations of FIFA. And, and the majority of normalizations have been electoral malpractice mm. by the national member. And so I believe that they should, I don't think they've read that document, I think they should apprise themselves of the content of that document and maybe change the approach that they're taking with these falsehoods that they're putting out there and these fabricated organizations because it could lead to normalization, which I do not want for Jamaica. Carville, in 15 mm -hmm. seconds, how close do you, Carville Stewart, having read that document, think that Jamaica's football is to normalization? Very close in respect to the activities around the election, both in terms of the delay of the election and now fabricating organizations to be members of the, in, the, in the election. And as you can see, it's all total conflicts of interest, which FIFA is not going to look kindly at. Mm. Carvel Stewart, chairman of the Harborview Football Club, thank you very much for joining us on the Sports Mag Zone today. We really appreciate it, and we really appreciate how you have broken down the issues for us today. And I'm pretty sure that we'll be in touch again throughout the course of the next couple of months as we head up to January 14. If indeed January 14 does happen, <laughs> thanks, Carvel. If, if it isn't brought forward, thank you for having me. <laughs> Or that, we take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Mike Zone.